Open the mouth, tongue out, clear it of the teeth, push it out as hard as, as far as you can, and hold it there. Yeah. Tongue surfboard. Nice. Yeah. Boom. Oh, Tim. Happy Quite life. a long Happy tongue life. in this. Look at Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so that one is really, really good to start strengthening. Listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. So, Cole, welcome back for part two. There is not that many guests that get the prestigious honour of coming on for a part two. So uh, we're glad to have you here. Oh, man, I'm glad to be back. This is, this is a total honour then, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we obviously so, thought there was so much in your brain that we didn't get into last time that we thought we need to go and dig a little bit deeper. Indeed, yeah. Jacko's done some work with you well, since, since yeah. our last An honesty call. I literally we finished the podcast the first time, and I was like, right, <laughs> I'm booking a session, and we did it. We did a little bit of a Zoom together, and we one of the things that you looked at was um, my mouth, my tongue, and you told me some things. It was like, do you even train your tongue, bro? And um, that was an <laughs> area that I was like, which I've, I, I would like to title to the podcast as that. But um, one of the things we sort of didn't get as far down this potential rabbit hole as before. And I think for a lot of people, though, it will, if they were like me, it was like, I've got no idea about this at all. Like, is it even a thing? Um, yeah. We to, to set the tone of like the first question around this, we met. Oh, Tim, could you, you say about the because the, oh, I'm going to forget his name. The S&C coach at the National Circus said something to us a while ago. Yeah, I'm also going to forget his name. But the, I've heard okay. this um, conversation a couple of times from different people of saying the tongue position in the mouth can affect our ability to be able to produce force. So Correct. the conversation we've had before is around all the strength training literature that we've got. If we didn't normalize for tongue position, then we could actually question the validity because it can have quite a significant impact on how much force, like outside of like that variability window that we would say is acceptable. So I don't know I if that's true, that. but I find it an interesting conversation to go, basically, the tongue is where it's at. So I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? I love that. I love that thought. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So this one time I was taking a, um, like a, a group, my mate, John Marsh, he's a really interesting guy. You guys would get on like a house on fire. Um, movement <laughs> guy and small business coach and um, ex, ex triathlete and stuff. Great guy. And so I was running this thing, and there's a there's another like movement guru there. He's like fully tanked, and I said, "Right, oh, dude, like, what's something you've really been working hard on, like that you haven't been able to master that you need extra strength for?" And he's like, "Oh, this." So it's you wouldn't know the name of it, but it was a complicated thing. Sitting down, you're in the splits, and then you go into a handstand. You know, put your hands in front. Yeah, yeah. And then lever up sort of thing. And he, I said, okay, show us. So he, he tried to do it. He's been working on trying to get it. I said, all right, now um, go like this for the video, uh, non-video, as it's just sucking the top, the flat surface, top surface of your tongue right up into the roof of your mouth. And it's what we call the cave, right? So for the video, <laughs> it's that. See, I, I taught you that, Jacko, right? You work. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got it, mate. I'm my tongue's amazing now. You <laughs> sure? <laughs> Don't go there. Um, yeah, I was going to say no, no evidence required. No, no case studies. <laughs> Just talking to me, sis. All right, so yeah. yeah, I got him to do that, and then we then we tried to. I didn't say that, and then we tried to do the exercise again, and. um it was okay, right? And then I got him to do a tip pop, all right? So a tip pop is when you take the tip of your tongue and you put it on the rugae, which is the little creases behind your front teeth on the top of your mouth, right? And you suction it there and you do one of them. So it's it's not a, that's not it. It's a, yeah. yeah this was the one I struggled with. Yeah, it's hard if you haven't done it before. The difference right? is that it's, too. It's a little bit of a skill, but once you get it, you, you're sweet. It's actually like a foundation for language. So when you say n, your tongue goes there. When you say t, your tongue goes there. Your tongue starts to go towards there, but not all the way. So the nuances of how mm. we make speech sounds is off the charts neurologically. That's why it takes so long to learn it. So I got this guy to go, 
30 times, right? He did that 30 times. He did his little thing and he got like absolutely way further than he's ever got with it. He's like, what the beep? You know, <laughs> like how the hell? So that concept, I, <clears throat> I love that concept that if you <laughs> I just, that's made my week, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm falling off my stool. I love that. But I, but I, I use that now so I can get out of jail free cards. So if somebody's ever going to challenge me on something that I don't know about, a strength training literature wise, go, yeah, but did they, uh, did they, did they accommodate for tongue position? No, oh, okay, yeah. well, I can't trust it. Well, you, know <laughs> the neurology, you know the neurology behind it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, well, what like, is, so go on to, what, in, in, in very, very layman's terms, as layman's terms as you can, why yeah, was, yeah. why was that tongue position having such an effect? And then, and then yeah. the, the, the final thing of that, uh, before we go into any other bits of like, what should then, what's the simplest thing something should do when they're trying to be strong with their tongue? Yeah, okay. So <clears throat> a why and then a practical tip. Yeah. Yeah. So the practical tip's easy. Learn to do that. But if you can't do that, you just take the tip of your tongue, you put, you get a little bit of cracker, like a little bit of rice cracker or something, put it on the tip of your tongue, put it up on that spot so it's right behind the front teeth there's little lines right you put the cracker on your tip of the tongue and you squish it up there with your mouth open so your tongue's working really hard you're trying to push your tongue into your nose right <laughs> and that's we call that the cracker crush exercise all right and that should be actually at rest you should have lip seal nasal breathing and that tongue should be up in that position all right so if your tongue's down you can do this yourself if you try and breathe through your nose and your tongue's sitting down You'll find there's some airway resistance to do that. If the tongue's up, it's much cleaner and smoother um, airflow. That's because of the tongue in relationship to the airway. So we always want the tongue up on that position. So if you notice yourself with mouth open, tongue down, the first thing you can do all day long is correct that and you're going to get stronger. Like Tim said, it's it's wild. Um, shut your so mouth. Why that? Why is that? Why is that? Yeah, you've got to shut your mouth. Yeah, why <laughs> is that? Because basically at that point where all those little lines are so the tongue's very sensory right super sensory so the reason we have those i mean how how cool is anatomy like this is this is this is like why you can get geeky about anatomy not just learning it out of a book but when you understand the function of it it's like this is this is awesome because then you can reverse engineer and change your own training or your client's training but there's a little underneath that um if you took away those lines underneath there there's a little hole in the skull which is called the incisive foramen there's a little hole there and out of that comes a, a, a nerve bundle that sort of branches out like this and crosses into that hole um, underneath all those ridges and lines right so you put your if you put your tongue up there you're you're activating or you're giving a sensory feedback to this nerve which is called the nasopalatine nerve and nasopalatine nerve comes back to the second branch of the trigeminal nerve. And the trigeminal nerve controls the first branch to your eye. The second branch is sensory to the face. Yeah. So all feeling to the face and, and, and uh <clears throat> I don't think no, it's not the tongue. And then the and then the um and then the um third branch controls the movement of your jaw. Okay, so what does that mean? It means what your tongue's doing and flicking into these this area and feeding back into this it's called trigeminal because it's got these three nuclei that are then feeding back into the brain it's telling your brain where your tongue is in relation to your jaw so when we speak like we talk 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 now you have to move your jaw and your tongue and your lips and your facial muscles in relationship to what you're trying to say with your breath and sort of cognitively process at the same time so that's a huge yeah. neurological achievement but if you think about it from a perspective of proprioception so how and where you're in that whole like of all the possible places i could move my lips face and tongue while i'm telling you this story it's it's freaking infinite right <laughs> so the the proprioception that goes on in that is so finite yeah so it's it's incredibly um um sophisticated system so if you put your tongue there right 
and your brain proprioceptively knows where you, that your jaw's stable. If your jaw's stable, um, then your neck's going to be stable, okay, because the tongue muscles join to the hyoid bone. So we've got suprahyoids, infrahyoids. So that's related to the sta stability of the neck, the shoulder girdle, the rib cage, your breathing, um, your jaw, and therefore your whole pelvis. So that, um, and then you've got that famous picture that everyone pulls out from anatomy trains that shows that the fascia of the tongue runs all the way down to the big toe. So <coughs> it's proprioception se and secondary to that, it's um, neurofeedback to allow, um, it's just like setting up for a deadlift, you know, if you're in the right position in your, in your, in your, in your spine, then you're going to be able to move more load because you can't fire a cannon out of a canoe, right? So this is like <coughs> fine-tuning that canoe's stability to a, to a, to a um, key level, like an, uh, just a, um, what's the word? Like, I don't know, the words have gone out of my head, but it's, it's like, it's really, really important functions, yeah? So speech, yeah. breath, chewing and swallowing, you can die swallowing really easily. Like I could go and drink my water bottle and die making this podcast if I didn't drink, like swallow properly. So that's like life and death, but we don't even think about it. We just go, I just smashed like a mushroom, you know, risotto and it's just like boom, boom, boom. <laughs> there it is. I got to go do this podcast. Why did you take so long to make that? But like <coughs> that's not in my conscious thing, but any, any aberrant feedback there will feed back into the system and it disturbs it. So when you get that right, you get your breath right, you get your tongue posture right, you get your facial muscles in the right length tensions, the whole system is going to be stronger for yeah. sure. And it's you can you can test that. You can, if you don't believe me, just stand up, put your arms in front of you, get someone to push down as hard as they can on your arms and put your tongue down here and then get them to do it again and put your tongue up and see how much stronger you are <coughs> that's i've done that before in seminars it, it, it freaks people out yeah so we're, just we're did it basically myself. saying i was saying cole that, that 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 tongue position is basically an opportunity to prime the system in a way so it's kind of like an a i don't know what the right phrase is but like just that simple thing of like putting the tongue in the right position allows the rest of the system to function more optimally is that yeah, from it's a strength so, training perspective, so what we're so saying. If you think about the motor nervous system, so that's your movement system. Go back to layman terms. So the the movement system, um, and forget the sensory. So forget the the what you taste and all that sort of stuff and feel, but just the movement system. Thirty eight percent of your motor nervous system output is feeding what we call the. No, I'm not going to say that big word. The lips, face, tongue, and breathing. Okay, so if if there's something average. Thirty eight percent. 38% and then you've got your hands and your feet, right, um, which are take up the next like massive chunk. You're almost, you really, and then your viscera, so you really don't have much left for your limbs. You know, your limbs are not that well, um, they don't take up that much neural juice, but this takes up like 38%, a heap. Yeah, so if there's any sort of aberrant inputs here, and you can correct them in an instant, you're going to be able to then leverage so much more juice to your motor nervous system. So that's how I see it. It's kind of right. like a, it, you can get away with it, but if you really want to fine tune it and really yeah, want to work with your anatomy, yeah, with your anatomy and with your system yeah. and with the hierarchy of the way your body works, boom, just put your tongue in the right spot, strengthen it up. And that, and you, you're so off. that 38%, is for the mm. for the lips tongue face is that's the that's the greatest amount there's nothing that's more effectively using up or more important than the brain's yeah, eyes yeah, because right? of speech yeah. like speech is yeah. the most complicated then chewing swallowing then breathing yeah because if you think about the control systems for all of those you know it's off the sky off the scale because you need you even need vagus involved in um speech because there's a branch of the vagus that becomes to the voice box. Right. Yeah. I'm just going to dive off on a slight tangent quickly, just because I've been waiting to try and find <laughs> an opportunity to get this kind of bit of knowledge that I gained from a book in it. This feels like it might be the right time. It might not be. I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, Cole, my mind is not working well this morning. Um, what is that thing called where we've got that picture of the human body where it's like the body parts are enlarged? I can't think. Homo. Humunculus. 
homunculus that's yeah. the one yeah. so th- there's I've, I've read a book um called the brain has a mind of its own it talks about mind maps basically like the sensory information written or the or the, the, the the picture that the brain has in the mind of these physical spaces of being able to then you can stimulate parts of the brain and your fingers will twitch and all that sort of stuff so it's like the brain has this kind of mind <clears throat> and it talks about the homunculus and this um and saying so everyone thinks that their genitals are so the most sensitive part of their body, right? <laughs> but then the line that it says, and it's an absolute classic, it goes, but if you look at this home course and where the neural information is, or the sensory input is being gathered from, like you're never going to read Braille with your dick. <laughs> yeah. like, but if you think your hands are super sensitive, but then you go a level deeper and you see on the home course, like the lips are huge, aren't they? That huge, whole kind of yeah. facial area yeah. is massive. It was a representation of, of the, the brain's um, priority of the information or gathering from that area. So I just thought it was like, that had me laughing because I was like, we, we just completely misunderstand where we actually think our brains uh, For the visual. Get, well, the most... It's a caricature, it's basically that type, that type of thing, isn't it? Although, yeah, I think your maybe. genital, our genitals on that look quite small. Um, yeah. But certainly the for face the, uh, the, for the podcast listeners, Jacko's holding up the caricature that someone did for us. Um, <laughs> yeah, my, my jaw looks massive on that. It's actually quite good though, isn't it? Like it's, it's, the, um, it's the lips, it's the lips. It's the lips. Yeah, you need it. But yeah, that the homunculus is It's the pleat in the pants. And that's sensory, but... um. Here's a see, here's a tangent for you. The homunculus actually accounts for foot fetishes. Talking about genitals. Oh, does it? Yeah, because the the, the area of that because it's kind of like a um, sort of coronal slice of the brain, the way they represent it. But the area that um, has the feet is right next to the genitals. So when you get like a some sort of you know issue with the brain, that's where that comes from. That's made the room go very oh. quiet. I like that yeah. one. I I just want to take I just want to take a moment to Tim knows this. I love giving I love giving a bum tap to people, and I just want to take a second before I ask my next question to just go, bravo, Cole. In that, like, I'm like, <laughs> how do you know? Don't, this isn't a question to answer, but I'm just like, how do you know so much stuff? I love it when we talk to people. It's just like, it feels like you know. I don't know. It's like, how do you know? Like, so anyway, so tapping into that that knowledge of um, not uh, much time and not uh, enough money of understanding, but for, <laughs> yeah. for as well as wowing people with just like, oh, we know loads of stuff, and it it's like some more type of practical things. And if someone um, and I had a little bit of experience with this when I had that session with you of going, how would someone assess then? They've obviously can go. You've already done like, do you, does your tongue tend to be low or do you get it in a good position high up? How can mm. somebody, how can we make, what are some simple potential things we can do or tests we can try out? Because you made me try and do a few things with like widening my mouth or putting my tongue in the different positions. It was like, oh man, that feels really tight or try and do this and it feels really weak. Like what are some things that people can do to actually find out is their tongue rubbish like mine or or not? Hmm. Um, I think, I think you kind of look at the whole system, right? So the first thing I'd look at is, okay, um, does the person have dry or tending towards dry cracked lips? And you might say, well, what's that got to do with it? Well, that immediately shows us that air is passing over those lips too much. Mm. Okay. So when you've got that mouth open, um, the tongue has to go low because if the tongue is up, all right, then the air's not going to get freely through there. There's a there's a barrier, so the tongue drops yeah. down. So if you've got that sort of dry lips and you're constantly getting out the chapstick and and you know whacking that stuff on to keep your lips moist, then chances are you could be breathing through your mouth, which is automatically going to give you a low tongue position. Yeah, yeah? and so then you want to do okay. If you want to get really technical, what you could do, and this is a really easy trick to do and it probably is easier if you get someone else to do it but um what you do is you go okay i'm going to get a ruler and you and you and you open your mouth as wide as you can okay so you go from the bottom of the top teeth to the top of the bottom teeth if that makes sense and you're going to measure how wide your mouth opens you know for the video jacko for 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 the audio listeners jacko's got a ruler out yeah, yeah, but not mouth. just any ruler. Look at it; it's like a yeah, triangular that's ruler. Like a drafting one, yeah, pretty fancy. Yeah. Oh yeah, but it's just um, when I do a little bit of graphic design, goal, you know how it is, uh, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, 
So <laughs> ah, that, that it's going to feel so that, that tight. You, well, what do you got? About 40, 50? I'm gonna, that gives you the total uh, opening, okay? Total open, all right? So uh, it's hard from the open t and then teeth, four. teeth to teeth. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It looks about fifty, mate. I reckon. Ah. Uh, uh, good effort. It's all right, right. That is. Blue in the face. <laughs> um. One, 50. two, three, four, fifty-five, fifty-five centimeters. Oh. Okay, I was wrong. I was out by five. Right. Yeah. So now what you do is I'll you take you. the tip of that tongue. Remember, we were talking about the spot where the where the lines are, the incisive papilla. Take the tip of the tongue and hold it on that spot, and then open your mouth again as wide as you can and measure it. Okay. Right. Oh, and far so less, Jacko. Yeah. Ah. Uh, what do you got? I've been a bit slack. Thirty-five. Twenty-five. 25 serious okay so give me and it was worse before because i have been doing my stretches yeah right so that's interesting so 25 divided by 55 actually gives you 45 percent yeah i'm not even 50 percent so that is called that's really easy test to do like you can do it on yourself in the mirror or get someone to measure for you but that's called a tongue range of motion ratio okay. and what do you want it to so, be percentage wise yeah so you want it to be about 80 to 85 plus percent. Jack, I got some work 45. to do. That sounded... The famous strength and conditioning coach only got a tongue range of motion ratio of 45 percent. It's like, what an In idiot. In front of all his listeners. How about that? <laughs> Lucky I gave you those exercises, brother, or you might have really embarrassed yourself. Man, I, yeah, I, I couldn't even <laughs> open my mouth before yeah, I had a session with you. That was all right, wasn't it? That's, I yeah. sure I'm max open, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's it. pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, of course so it is. What, yeah, what that'll tell you is... <laughs> <laughs> but there's no problem. Hey, hey, this is one of the biggest lessons from the podcast over the years that we've done it. Being bad at something is good because then you can improve it, right? I'm going to be like Superman after I've sorted my tongue out. I, I say that to kids all the time. They're like, oh, these exercises are hard. I'm like, yeah, well, why would I give you easy exercises? I'm like, hello. That guy. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> yeah. What I really need to do is get in there underneath your tongue and do some my fascial release work. That's how we. That's how we'd help that one. Is it? Yeah. Fingers in the mouth. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a uh, bit of a technique uh, to it. Ah, uh, it's ripping horrible, man. Yeah. Work it, Jacko. I'm so quite pleased with my result there, Jacko. The anterior attachment, Jacko. So right where it joins the uh -huh. mandible, right at the front. You just get either side of that and just really push it. I'm not going to do it because I've just been out in Sydney. And I uh, uh, I'll, I'll do. I'll do a bit while you're talking, then I'll remeasure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. So that tongue range and motion ratio will tell us a couple of things. The main thing it's going to tell us is how much tension's underneath that tongue. Okay. Or and or how much is that tongue restricted? So the biggest thing people can't do is what we call, here's a fancy word, tongue and floor of mouth dissociation. So there's a sling of muscles on the floor of the mouth that support, um, well, they actually, um, there's actually fascia on top of them and that fascia folds up and that becomes the lingual frenula. So the, lingual, the, the, the tongue thing, under, your string under your tongue is actually a fold of fascia. It's I'm literally crying here, sorry. The floor, yeah, it hurts, eh? Hey? The mirror is the floor of the mouth, okay? And there's muscle underneath that called your genioglossus. So just like any other muscle, when you get it tight, you know, and it's lacking in range of motion, therefore the function of the system is not going to be as, as, as good. So that many, many people have this issue underneath the tongue is tight, restricted, and fascially, and there's fascial tension all through the system. So what you've got to learn to do is move just like you would in your hip and back, like dissociate your hip and back when you're moving. Um, you've got to do floor of mouth and tongue dissociation. It's quite fun. Well, how do people get, like, how does that happen, um, Cole? Why would people get, like, particular tightness in the mouth? What do you get now, Jacko? He's, he's going for it. I look, it's worse to me, isn't it? Worse, huh? no, it's a bit better. It looks more <laughs> like 40, I thought, like 35 or so. 30. 30, there you go. I can't I'm crying. My eyes are watering. Yeah, so he got 10% more. 
It feel it does it okay, feels okay. significantly different like now. Right. It feels only thir- good. Only thirty percent to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what have I got to get to? <laughs> eighty. Yeah, but no, when yeah. I was eighty percent of fifty five. I'll do the math, don't you worry? When I have that work done, my whole soul to girdle just relaxes. Like mm. it's wild. But um how does it get like that? <sighs> it's a forty four, um, my word. It starts. It actually starts as embryology in as you're developing, um, and then you've got things like um, birth and birth strains, and then you've got diet um, and lack of chewing, um, soft diets. You've got tongue thrusting habits with and re- what we call retained infant reflex tongue thrust reflexes that re- remain. Um, <clears throat> I guess in Australia, we, you know, we sort of like mumbles, so maybe that can be. <laughs> I, I would say, I, I would didn't say, want to just, say like the, just like, yeah, just like the rest of the musculoskeletal system, it's lack of function, really. Mm. Like, people aren't using it properly, you know? It's really interesting since our last conversation, like, it, when, you, when you said that, that the speech is like the, the, the hardest or the most complicated neurological development kind of process. Mm. Like I've got, a t- my Naomi is 10 months old now. So I, but I kind of like started listening a little bit to like how she's learned to speak. And it kind of, it was a real live example of, of what you were talking about. But interestingly, yeah. the f- one of the first things that she, that she could kind of like make a, a baby noise, but to get people, her, her first way of communicating and she still does it now where she would click her tongue to get yeah. people's attention. Cause mm-hmm. it, and, and then she would, and you actually then you could communicate backwards and forwards with her. Like if you click, if she clicked and you click back at, then she would also then do it. Like engage in this very primitive conversation. But just interesting that that tongue is is already at that stage of a less than a year old, mm. doing some work in that communicative um, development yeah, phase. That's um, interesting. She's getting sensory feedback to the second branch of trigeminal. She, she's mm. pumping feedback to her brain about where that tongue is, and she's trying to coordinate it. And they go through a series of process of making sounds that gradually become more and more refined and they prune off the, the ones that don't serve them and then they start like la 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 yeah, the babble yeah. and then that slowly gets more and more refined. That's why it it's takes cool. like five years to be become you know, actually learn some language. Yeah. Mm. I've got another question. Um mm. just uh this is kind of one that people might have seen and I don't think I fully understand it um, as to the science behind it. I've never used it before. But what's the, um, what's the rationale behind people using mouth guards or like, you know, the uh, mouthpiece when they're lifting? You see ah. like strength training athletes, everyone, like strongman will do it. In the world's pop strongest a, man. Mouth guard in. Everyone in the world's strongest but, man I've seen had it. Am, am I right in thinking this is jaw alignment or tension? Yeah, is that they're I biting down a gum shield? It's force generation from the occlusal, occlusal surfaces of the teeth. So when you when the teeth come together, you will be stronger. Yeah. Okay. Um, I could I could I could I could go down a rabbit hole with that um, and sort of blow your mind to say that there's. <laughs> Are we not already down a rabbit hole? <laughs> oh yeah, we'll go down there. Go know. another one. Jack O's just been measuring his mouth with a ruler. The hole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> good <rabbit> hole. <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, so one of the dentists I used to work for was was wild. He was mad, um, but he was delightful. And what he found out was that there's actually three main body types of humans, and he figured out to the nearest cusp so like a cusp is the little bumps on your teeth like the little points you know so he figured out to the nearest cusp that he could design a little splint that would touch on certain points of the teeth when you bit down and give you like dramatically more strength and power and i was like wow give me one of those (laughs) and um he did and he gave me the wrong one and I woke up in the middle of the night wearing it and my whole back had gone into spasm. It was like a steering <laughs> pain. I ripped them out of my mouth and threw them down the stairs. I said, mate, you gave me the wrong ones. Long story short, he gave me the right ones. My PBs went through the roof and I used to wear those at night time. Um, so so mm. the occlusion, because of that proprioceptive feedback, the occlusion is like, critical to that whole thing the ability to fire the cannon out of the canoe and a lot of lifters um actually end up cracking their teeth from doing that from from splinting Mm. down on the jaw Mm -hmm. yeah 
um, because when you do that, you activate the neck muscles, you stabilise the neck, and there's your there's your um, you know your battleship to start firing from. You know, if your neck's really strong and tight, like like um, the same you would do with your core, then you're going to be able to use that um, shoulder better. But you can you can sort of blow the system out doing it with artificial means too. That's something to watch for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in an, and I'm just trying to think if I'm training and lifting, I actually this is one thing I'm going to do as this next week is I don't know that I'm aware of my tongue position or jaw position. If I'm doing something heavy, I don't think I'm thinking about it, which I, I'm going to now. But yeah, today what, it, yeah, what's the, um, so, so we've talked about the tongue. So if I'm going to go into a heavy lift, for example, like I'm going to get a heavy set of pull-ups or something, whatever, I'm going to go tongue against the, that point that we talked about just behind the front teeth and then jaw open or jaw, like just not kind of I'm trying to crack teeth, but jaw closed with a level, a level of compression to try and, but not, kind of like splinting so hard that i'm gonna to need to go to the dentist correct yeah or well, yeah. should i get my old um out. mouth guard out from rugby have you still got one tim and you can just crank down on that uh, yeah i'm not sure the bite and boil mouth guard from like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite it's quite what cole's talking about five quid put in a bowl of hot water and then just shove it in your mouth and like burn your gums while you're doing it because you didn't wait long enough yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you remember I, those yeah, yeah. yeah i remember it well well, people used to write like nasty messages to the opposition on it <laughs> when they stood in line. I don't know if you guys did that. You used to line up and shake hands before the game, and then you'd smile and you'd have this like "f you" written on your mouth. <laughs> Actually, Karen's got Karen was thinking about getting back into hockey. She's had a gum shield in her bag for like about two years, and she's got it out. And it's been soaking in Milton for about a month just to try and get it cleaned up. I might do that. I might go and write something across the front of it. <laughs> Well, well here's, here's one of the things though um you know a lot of people wear night guards for bruxism i don't know if you've come across that yeah um, sort of slightly change the topic but we go on to sleep right so sleep is so critical to recovery and therefore to strength you know so um a lot of people grind their teeth at night and grinding and bruxing um <clears throat> and then what they do is they put these night guards in which are kind of like a flat thing that sort of protects the teeth, quote unquote. But actually, when you do that, this whole system that we're talking about, you actually destabilize it. So those night guards can actually be quite, um, for performance-wise, if you're thinking about that sort of thing, they can actually be quite destructive because what the the grinding is is actually a symptom of something else, and that something else is what we'd sort of overarchingly term an airway issue yeah i was wondering Mm. i was talking to someone this week cole about this um and saying that like potentially like that grinding of your teeth is like it's a lot of tension to create that and that if you were breathing and the body like relaxed and soft and the body relaxed like presumably surely you wouldn't be grinding your teeth up is there is how someone was breathing linked into that potentially Hundred percent. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, hundred percent. So you, how you're breathing at night time, if you need to grind your tooth, what you're doing is you're effectively splinting your airway. So you're going like that. Uh, okay. Okay. But if you let's say you you drop a hammer on your toe tonight and you go to bed and you've got a bruised sore toe, you'll probably grind your teeth more. Yeah. Right. So you can be aberrant like like uh inputs, like inputs that are causing a problem so that could be structural like you drop something it could be a biochemical thing as well yeah. you know that you're not something that you're eating drinking or coming in contact with yeah. um, and it can be a neuroemotional thing too so most people think oh teeth grinding that's because you're stressed and it can be but the number one biggest primary reason why you grind your teeth at night is your airway it's actually a structural thing it's the volume of the airway itself um is 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 yeah. lacking I can, I'm actually in the dental clinic. Right, and so by... Right and I, yeah, and by grinding, you're effectively trying to force that more open. It's splinting it open, yeah. yeah. And it's something wild, like, there's I can't remember the actual pressures, but we don't... Like, when we chew on a nut, it's like X amount of pressure, but when we grind our teeth at night, it can be like... 10,000 X that pressure. It's like crazy force yeah. that we put through our teeth at night. So much so that people's teeth like literally wear flat. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I've got a tooth that's like flat mm. that used that, uh, yeah, right. 
and yeah, and I knew I'd grind my teeth because I'd have dreams that my teeth were falling out. Yeah, that's really common. That's that one is actually linked often more to to the the, the neuro emotional stress where you have those dreams. And you no, Tim said it was out. when you. Tim told me that when my, when I dream that my teeth falling out, it's because I'm gonna make I'm gonna become really rich, become a millionaire. I never oh, told okay. you that. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> but people have these ones in it like, oh, if you dream about that, then it means you're going to be rich. <laughs> or it means the tooth, that the tooth fairy is going to come. Yeah. I had that dream too. And I'm still waiting. But like, I had that dream when I found out my girlfriend of three, three months was pregnant and we both lived in separate houses and she lived with her parents still. And, uh, and I was like, got no money. And I'm like, holy shit and i had that dream and i was so sore through the underneath my chin i could hardly swallow like i was that stressed i didn't mm. know what to do you know sorted it out we're right. still together but um, <laughs> <laughs> um so practical to this is like there's the, there's just free games on the on the table for people today isn't there yeah. they just go and think about these things as they go and start to get into their training a little bit mm. um so we talked a little bit cole just going to put quick takeaways um so we talked about trying to get that that tongue into that position at the front of the roof of the mouth we've um is there anything else people can do they can uh, this is quite difficult for the auditory listeners yeah. um on the podcast but the, the youtube guys might be able to kind of get a bit of an insight any, any kind of like two or three things that we can do just during the day which can can help to get yeah. us some some better control and strength in the mouth fully i'm going to give you two two real key things <clears throat> one is the tongue surfboard jacko knows this one um so what you do is you this is this helps with that ability to separate the um floor of the mouth from the tongue itself so we really want to be able to move the tongue separately to the floor of the mouth look at him go uh, uh, if, if you're not on video, if you're seriously not on video, you got to get. You gotta, this is the reason to come and subscribe to YouTube. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Hit the subscribe <laughs> button if you like this show. Um, I open the mouth, and you stick the tongue out, and you want it clear of your top and bottom teeth. So you should be able to see your top and bottom teeth. It's hard. And then you just want, yeah, and you want a little bit of arch on it, a little bit of rise. Yeah, mm. just to, and you want it skinny. You don't want it kind of hanging out. Yeah, yeah, and that that's actually that's good. <laughs> well, lucky if you listen. Well, you got to practice these things, that. Tim. Uh, you got to practice these things. <laughs> when your tongue's as bad as again, mine, you got to practice. I, I do it again. I want to mark a clip on this. We're gonna put this on the, <laughs> no. the social. Do that. Yeah, do that yeah, fat yeah. tongue Fully. position again. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one, go. So open the Fully. mouth, tongue out. Clear it of the teeth, push it out as hard as as far as you can, and hold it there. Yeah, tongue surfboard, nice. Yeah, Boom. oh Tim, happy Quite wife, a long happy tongue wife. Like Look it. at Tim. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that one is really really good to start strengthening. And the other one, you really, if you're listening, you really want to check the youtube on this is the granny surprise <laughs> screamer face <laughs> so basically <laughs> so basically from the forehead there's a muscle and it goes there's another muscle in the back of your head and there's a big stretchy sheath that runs between those two okay and when your brain grows that stretch stretch that stretchy sheath actually you know springs and that actually propels forward um and lateral face growth it's like a big sling it's an awesome system so what you want to do is you want to you want to train those muscles just like you train your handstand muscles right so you do that with this granny screamer so you take your lips cover your teeth with your lips right and then bring the eyebrows up make your face excuse me go really long eyebrows up eyes up you got to have the mouth open tim jacko uh-huh uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. there you go yeah so your face goes really narrow like a granny getting a shock. That's it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm getting like that, spasms that, on this side. Mark that clip. That's the clip for the social for sure. Yeah, I've just grabbed yeah. it. I've grabbed yeah. it. Brilliant. Okay. All right. And then you do the opposite to that. So you scrunch your, you, you make your lips go wide. You scrunch your face down. <clears throat> yeah. And then you do the opposite and go long again. So you do this for reps. That's it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's like a non-surgical facelift i tell you 
Yeah. Love it. So that gets that. <clears throat> the, the, like the, it. The, the, the technical name for it is the epicranial aponeurosis, but that just gets that that sling really pumping and so it actually really helps if you're like just trying to i don't know write a paper or something and you're feeling a bit shit you do like 20 of those and you'll just it'll wake up you'll wake up your whole system goes you know, shakes the brain gets all the facial like a lot of cra- uh, the facial nerve get a bunch of feedback you get the trigeminal nerve happening it's good I, I love the idea of um, somebody sat in traffic doing this. Yeah, and, um, should be. You know, you know yeah. sometimes you, you, you're playing the same song and you see someone, like, you listen to the radio, and someone's singing along to the song that you're listening to. Someone's, I, I love the idea of people sat in traffic doing this, being like, oh, it's, this, it's Cole Clayton. Well, well you, know, <laughs> you know, your man over there, Mike Mew, like he must have heard of Mewing. Mewing, yeah. Mm-mm. You heard of Mewing? Yeah. It's a big trend. Like Mike Mew, John Mew was his dad, or is his dad, he's still going, I think who's this, like, it was very much a pioneering orthodontist, dentist, and Mike sort of took over his work, and they're very much about all this paradigm, tongue position, correct breathing, yeah. functional dentistry, you know, growth guidance appliances and stuff. But he started that mewing thing, and the mewing's become, like, a thing, like millions and millions and millions of, you know, whatever's shares and likes or whatever it is that is important. Um, but, yeah, the, the whole... Um, there's a whole sort of movement of where should you place your tongue and how do you do these little facial exercises mm. that he started over there. So good. Cole, thanks for that today. That's just like, yeah, there's some really interesting stuff in there for, from just a mind-blowing perspective of some of the things we don't think about, don't know about, not talked about enough. Mm. Um, that's why I love these conversations because it's just like an exploration into... I just, things we don't know yeah it's cool i just and love how you just blew apart the whole of strength training literature <laughs> in the first sentence. I'm, just, I'm still rocking on that i'm just like sorry, you can dude. have that one call that's yours you can take really? that really i can use yeah. it yeah use that and one. just credit me i, I, I also i love else. the fact that so feeds back a reference <laughs> and i love the fact that some of the things that we're talking about doing like how simple is it to just wiggle your face about a bit and move you to think about moving to it. We're not asking or we're not challenging. It's not, it doesn't cost us anything. It's not super complicated. No. And there's some real yeah. science behind why it's going to be beneficial. And it's, it's great that we're just finding out more and more of these things so we can get the, the best out of, out of our bodies. And there's a good yeah. reason if you're listening to the podcast and you've never watched it on YouTube to head over to YouTube and watch the video, this is definitely a visual one to be able to watch back as we come you're there, hit subscribe. That will make uh, that will make Cole very happy <laughs> if you subscribe to Absolutely, our YouTube. Absolutely, please. Because yeah. he doesn't yeah, have a have a YouTube, yeah. but if we but where if someone does want to find out a little bit more Cole about you and they after the or if they haven't watched the first part, listen to part one as well. But um, what's the best way for someone to sort of uh, find out a little bit more uh, or get be able to get in touch with you? Well, here's the thing, Jacko. This year's the year, man. I'm launching my YouTube channel this year. Ah, yes. I told someone, oh, no. one th- I said, said I've seen this guy, he's incredible. I said, he's so good. And I was like, this will blow your mind. This will blow some people's mind more than <laughs> He's so good, he's not on social media. That's how good he is. Mm. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's I'm not like, going to Instagram, but, but I am going to yeah. start it. You don't need it. You're too um, good for it. But what I was going to say is about that. this whole paradigm not being rocket science, right? Like it's it's simple stuff to make a surprise, silly surprise granny face. But the leverage that yeah. you get, as we've discussed for the last hour, is off the scale, right? So what yeah. I'm going to tell you about finding me is if you've got kids or you work with kids or you know kids or you're a nephew or nieces or whatever and you see some of this stuff with the kids, you've yeah. got to get on it. You got to get on it. So I have a website called Happy Kids Clinic, and the clinic starts with K. So happykidsclinic.com, and um, that's a good right. place to start because if we can get the kids doing these simple things, like Tim was saying in the back of the car, right? Yeah. You, you change the world. By the way, it's it's amazing. Yeah. You know? So in this dental clinic I'm in tonight, um, that's what we do. We do osteopathy face exercises, breathing and special dental appliances that are amazing. And yeah. um, it's it works incredibly well. Like we're getting crazy changes in kids in like a month, two months, three months. It's it's wild. So that's Dr. Levi's, L-E-V-I-S dot com dot A-U. And then just my name, Cole Clayton, 
um, C O L E C L A Y T O N dot com dot au. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's Cole Clayton. It's got f- some stuff on it. The bre- the baseline breathing course. So if you're a coach or trainer or therapist and you want to do sort of a bit of a deep dive into um, breathing, um, there's plenty. There's there's a whole um, forty video course on there. So that's why I'm doing the YouTube to sort of start to really talk about this stuff and get this stuff out there and um and 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 feeding back into those platforms nice good man thank you so much for coming on my absolute pleasure it was awesome to get around too (laughs) (laughs) thanks mate we'll chat soon